Hey, how come you're starting? We haven't even like, I haven't even said, hey. Hey, how about that? Because I'm waiting for you. We're going to make a pork loin roast using the sous vide method. And I'm just making a little bit of a stuffing to put in it. First of all, I cut up an apple into chunks and now I'm going to cut up my onion just using half of a medium-sized onion just using about a tablespoon of uh, chopped Italian parsley minus the fingertips there's no fingertips in it oh not in this recipe <laughs> and the Italian parsley is the flat leaf parsley it's not the curly one you can use the curly one if you can't find uh, Italian parsley. Adding a little bit of oil, just regular canola or vegetable oil. I'm going to add the onions and potato. Potato. <laughs> I'm gonna add the onions and apple. I also toasted two slices of stale bread. This is a potato bread that I happen to have, and I'm just going to cut it up into cubes. You can use whatever bread you want so long as you dry it out by toasting. You can use croutons if you want. Oh, lovely added flavor. Toss them into a bowl. Now. You know, something's missing from uh, <laughs> this combination. What do you think it is? What I really wanted to do was add some butter. So I'm just going to add about a tablespoon of butter. Okay, that's maybe more than a tablespoon. Just maybe. Just maybe. That's okay because this is all going to soak into that yummy bread. So instead of oil, you can use butter. You don't want to use butter, you don't have to, but I just think that butter adds more flavor. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna add it to my bread cubes. I'm gonna add the parsley. And I'm just estimating. So just a pinch of thyme. Okay, that pinch is probably about an eighth of a teaspoon, not just a pinch. Salt, pepper, stir this around a little bit first. And I'm going to add some chicken broth just to moisten the bread cubes. And say you start with a couple of tablespoons. What kind of texture are they looking for? Not too mushy and not too dry. So it shouldn't be pooling up That's at right. the bottom. Yeah, so there should be no liquid left at the bottom. You know what? The best way to do this is just by hand. It should be cool enough. I just prepared some salt and pepper in a bowl so that when I'm touching the meat, I'm not touching everything else. And I'm going to cut along the ribs but not all the way through. And that's where I'm going to put my stuffing. I'm just going to season inside. Dude, how is that going to fit in there? Maybe it's too much, I don't know. Anyways, I'm still going to tie it up and I'm going to leave this in like this. Oh yeah. And then whatever cool. stuffing doesn't fit, then it doesn't fit. So I have this kitchen twine. I'm just going to tie it up in between each bone. And whatever stuffing falls out, it's going to fall out. And then um, make sure that you pull the string over twice so that when it ties, woo, <laughs> it will actually stay in place and not unravel on you. Maybe you could tie it on the other side first instead of the center. Okay, I'll listen to you and see what happens. I will not be responsible <laughs> for the outcome. Did my idea work? I don't know. It looks like it did, so I'll take credit for that. Hey, are you gonna uh, season the outside? Yeah, smart aleck. All right, so I have my sous vide bag ready. And I'm going to put 
this in the bag. What about these orphaned... Uh... I'm going to put some of it back in the bag. But the rest you can put into a little dish, stick it in the toaster oven and bake it for like half an hour to 45 minutes. And you'll have a little bit of stuffing to go with your pork. Okay, I have three cloves of garlic that I've already crushed. I'm just gonna toss them in there. And I have three stems of Italian parsley that I've just kind of taken off the big stem. Just taking the leaves. And we'll just put that in there as well. I'll pour a little bit of olive oil in there. I am going to double bag it because I have not had great experiences with these bags. I don't want to want it to burst on me. So I'm just going to stick it in another, just a Ziploc bag, before I put it in the water. And just for clarification, we have been reusing these large Ziploc bags for the yes. double bag duty. Mm -hmm. So I've preheated my jewel at 145 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to cook it for four hours. Just going to push all the air out. See you in a while. It's been four hours and the jewel is done. I turned it off. I'm going to remove the pork roast and we're going to put it on a cast iron pan and we're going to put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit just to brown it. I'm going to put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I already said that. All right, butter makes a reappearance. Yep, I'm going to put a slab of butter on top and hopefully it'll just ooze all over but in what the if oven. It just... That's fine. What if it just falls down? Yeah, that's fine because I'm going to make gravy with it after. I have about just over a cup of chicken broth and I am going to pour the rest of this jus in there and I'm going to make a gravy with it after the pork finishes searing. That's actually a lot of liquid. Mm -hmm. so now I have two cups of broth. That's fine. We like gravy anyways. Smells pretty good. Yeah. See enough drippings? Yep. Adding some flour. Let's start with about two tablespoons. We're cooking this for about a minute. Pouring in the salt. It smells really good. Here is the gravy, and I'm just going to put this in a gravy boat and serve this on the side. I'm just going to put cut giant slabs of pork like a chop. It's going to fall over. Mmm. Oh, that looks really good. That looks incredible. Uh huh. The very first time I had a pork chop at a chop house. It was in Chicago and the waiter asked me, oh, would you like, how would you like that done? And I'm like, I'm ordering pork. What do you mean? How would I like that done? And he's like, oh, well, you can get it pink if you like. You can have it medium rare, medium well. I'm like, wow, really? And so I got it medium. I think I had it medium and it was the most amazing pork chop I've ever had delicious. So now I know that you can cook pork up to a certain temperature. It doesn't have to be dry and puck-like. And now, are you ready for... The taste. Adding to your story about the pork chop that you had at, I believe it was at Ditka's. And I think after that time, it kind of like shattered your belief that pork needs to be like deathly white right to be cooked when you cook it properly hey it's going to be good and 
add the sous vide on top and it's gonna be that much better. So I'm gonna add a bit of gravy and thanks for making some veggies on the side. Whoa, that's really moist. I have to go in for another piece because that may have been the fat speaking. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty juicy, it's, it's pretty juicy dude. Mmm, dang girl, that's good. Stuffing is a nice complimentary flavor, not overpowering at all. And your usual oven roasted root vegetables, uh, we can put the recipe right there. A nice meal for a rainy day. Mm, I gotta get another bite, it's really good. You gotta do it. All right, time for dinner. Well, I can't wait to dig in. I hope you all enjoyed that video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and come follow me on Instagram. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.